Hi guys and welcome to Bomb Anime. It's your girl Rika. And big boy Sammy here bringing you a hot or not part two of Dr. Ramoon, Mysterious Disease Specialist. First things first, I just want to say how sick I felt when they did the Chikua episode and then Dr. Ramoon decided that he was going to cook some. He tends to do that, doesn't he? And I was just like, I can't take this because it looked like he was cooking and chopping up peen and <laughs> and I just I don't I don't have the stomach for it. Wow, you don't have the stomach. Imagine me watching that episode. When he pulled that knife out, I was like, jeez, please, no. So I really want to talk about the theme of honesty that's been running through this whole show. And the whole idea of being true to yourself. Because most of these diseases, the all common denominator is being true to yourself, being honest, saying how you feel, and self-help. It's a very big self-involved show. And that's the theme that's been running through. And I really like it because they pick lots of different scenarios for it to happen. I think that a quote from this actual show directly shows exactly what you're talking about because they said that human relationships are the cause of the most stress. And I would definitely agree with this one. It is definitely the cause of most stress, but it makes sense because we're social creatures. And so we have a lot of opportunities to misunderstand each other, hold in the things that we really want to say, just a lot of different things. And they actually showcased loads of different relationships in this show and i think they did a really amazing job you know what side note the way you were looking at me while you were saying that relationships cause the most stress our work relationship is cool though Rooks, yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I, I kind of felt a vibe but all right we'll talk about it after anyway i, I need the hr department <laughs> Bob, you are the hr department <laughs> But yeah, you're right, like the relationships, the struggles, it's all mundane things with a supernatural twist and I really like it. I really actually liked the Bungo and Haru story. I thought it was really sweet the way that Haru was trying to make his light shine less in the presence of Bungo to make him feel better. And Ramoon was like, you're actually insulting him by not doing your best, which I agree with. I mean, it is an insult. You're basically saying you're so crap, you can never beat me. So I'm just going to lower myself down. However, this also happens in real life. Like you'll have people who are, they shine bright in it and people will become jealous of that. And it can, it can turn into a different kind of story and it does make people want to sort of shrink themselves down to avoid that kind of thing yeah i mean like as a social media guy for bomb anime i'm on tiktok watching people shine all day long but i'm pretty sure that the same thoughts are going through their head as well when they get a little bit of adversity and you know people start calling them out and stuff like this all i'm gonna say is that you guys that follow us you carry on shining because we're loving the stuff you're doing I would also like to bring a little bit of attention onto the whole Rio Yu story. It was probably the most disturbing story in the series because we had a kidnapping and we had limbs severed and sent to the parents and basically the mom was she couldn't take the reality of the situation and so she stopped listening to anything that went against her ideal which is she has both of her children and it was it was sad but what i really didn't appreciate was that i didn't feel like i got enough conclusion from the story yes i know that the shells came off and she was able to basically accept it and look at her son but he was kidnapped his arm was chopped off and mailed to the parents please tell me what why that would happen that sounds like someone who knew you intimately that wanted to hurt you what the hell was going on in that household i want i need to know like i need some closure as to why someone would do that to a little kid for no reason they clearly knew who he was they knew where he lived look they only had 24 minutes in it <laughs> and 
Yeah, that could have been a multiple, multiple, multiple part story. You know what? If the whole season was about that and they expanded it, I wouldn't have been upset. But the bit that made it sad for me was the fact that Rio was, and I know they tried to say it wasn't, but the fact that the mum blamed Rio, clearly, because he was completely silent to her. Anything he said, she couldn't hear. She could hear some things of some parts of other people and certain things she couldn't hear from other people. But everything her son said, she couldn't hear. She didn't even want to listen to him. And I take it as she blames him. I guess you could look at it as he reminds her of her other son. But the way that I, I read it and watched it, it looked like complete and utter blame. I don't agree. Uh, yeah. Clearly, because your face is telling me. But that, that's how I saw it. No, I actually think she blamed herself. I don't think that she blamed her son at all. I think that she couldn't hear him because before her son went missing, she knew he wanted to say something to her and she chose to ignore him to comfort her other son as well. And so she saw it as, I shouldn't have ignored him at that moment. So then she couldn't hear her other son and anything that he said because she was associating it in her head with if I listen to this son I'll lose my son because she was actually hallucinating him so in her head in her mind at the at the time she was seeing you even though he wasn't there and so she was listening to him because she remembered that she didn't listen to him and that's why he left that's why he ended up dead I don't think she blamed the other son because nothing indicated that to me Okay, out of us two, I guess you're the expert on human interactions and emotion with your whole psychology-ish background. I'm one of them too, but... Sorry? Oh, do you know I can call myself a counsellor and become okay, one? Okay, so <laughs> Sorry, a little runny joke, guys, runny joke. But all jokes aside, I get what you're saying and I, I can also see that interpretation. It would seem a better story if it happened my way. <laughs> Also, what did the dad do to pee someone off to make them do that to the son? Like, come on, bro. It's got to be something that he's dealt in, especially because, did you see, he signed off on all of these different extravagant things with Ramoon. Yep, everything was just signing. Something happened. That guy is involved in something weird. Yeah, the person who should have been getting the mysterious disease was the dad, not the mum, really. <laughs> so I want to talk about another theme that's going on here the theme of self-sacrifice now i know it got a bit on the nose towards the end of the episode but all throughout sorry the end of the season but all throughout the season ramon just doesn't care about himself bro he's like super selfless and that makes a good i don't know main character in the shonen but when you're a doctor bro on a level memoji is correct you need to shut up because you're not you're not mentally equipped to be a doctor here i didn't think that he needed to do that yes he did end up in a dangerous situation however he had backup plans he could have easily used those and he wouldn't have had to be in that situation it wasn't that he was in real danger he could have actually got himself out of it at any point and even though taro did hurt his hand again that's not life-threatening it's a bit of glass these people that ramon has actually saved if they were following mommy g's theories of how things should go all of them would have been dead they would have, almost all of them would have died. Toru would have definitely died because he would have just been like, okay, then you didn't accept the help, bye dude. And he would have literally starved to death in that pit. How sad and his family would have never known what happened to him or where he was. Okay. The girl with the condiments, who would have helped her? That was really extreme, the way that he actually went about it. But would that situation have got, that mom was, I'm not even gonna say on the edge, it was complete neglect and a v. Look, I'm not saying that they would not have been saved if not for his actions. I'm just saying that if you're supposed to be a doctor, you know, it's like when you go on holiday on an airplane, they say, put your mask on first before you put any other children's masks on. You have to do that stuff before, you know, you look after others. It, that, bruv, he's not taking care of himself. Man went and decided to wrap that magic headscarf around his face and then look how broke off he was while he was trying to carry Toru all the way back home. My guy has no regards for himself and I get it. He's passionate, he wants to help people and that's why people go into the profession in the first place and actually someone's doing it. But he needs to chill a bit. He's lucky he's got Toru around him or else you know, there'll be no Ramoon to be saving no one. What are you talking about? He's been around way before Tarek was there. Are you mad? I didn't see none of those people come to no picket. 
Yes, he is sacrificing himself a little bit, but I don't see anything wrong with it. Yes, his face was broken. He had a bit of bruising. Like, that's not that big of a deal. It's a slippery slope. That's all I'm saying. So basically, if you were Dr. Ramoon, everybody dead. I'd be more like Dr. House. Yeah, Dr. Dick. How, uh, <laughs> how I'm about we? Dr. Chigwell to you. <laughs> <laughs> So, what about Ona, Kuro's friend? He was so weird. This one was like a little bit personal to me because it just it just screamed like how trying to keep your children your baby and stop them from sort of growing up can really stifle and suffocate them. Now, I I feel him on this one. I think the dad messed up by telling a horrible horrible lie. I get that. But all he had to do was eat popcorn and he was Chris and even if he didn't get killed, he would have been the head of a really cool company. Like, that, what are you talking well, about? That's not what he wanted. Couldn't you not see his deterioration? You're just going to discount all of that. You don't care. Kids should do what I don't say they should. Stand it. Wow. He's not old enough to be making his own decisions here. Wow. Some parents out there wishy-washy, you know. You can be an astronaut. So I actually like the last few episodes where they actually gave us a bit of backstory on Dr. Ramoon and also on Toru. We got to see how they actually ended up together and I thought it was such a nice story. It also made sense why we always saw them eating in each of the episodes. It was a small detail that I didn't think mattered but then when you actually got the backstory at the end you could actually see the significance of them eating together. Obviously yes it's medicine but it's also become sort of a really nice tradition. I didn't even notice that cool like i did think back to think on the fact that they were eating together that's the they cooked in like almost right? every episode like literally, now, now that you're saying it I'm, I, I'm seeing it i'm you know what good on you you know what you're good at this you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've been doing it for almost a year or something when we first watched the the first episode we were sort of thinking that these were all standalone episodes yeah but once you actually get into it, you realise that they are connected and the larger story matters. Side note on that episode. Don't you think the way that Dr. Ramoon got the whole family to see what Toru saw was super convoluted and extra? <laughs> like, can you hold your brother for one second? All I need is a second. And it was like unnecessary but fun. I really, I did like it. I just thought it was really extra. No, I didn't think that simply because they made the family extremely simple-minded. They would not accept anything except for brute force. It also brings us back to why Taru is so violent. You know, we thought yeah. it was like a little funny thing where he just keeps hitting Ramoon because he kind of deserves it because he's kind of a bit of a but then they brought it back again. This is his family, this is what he grew up in. They own a dojo, they're not thinkers. Let's just be, let's just be honest. And they would much rather pass the burden onto one of the youngest members of the family so that they wouldn't have to do any real thinking for themselves. They're just like, oh, he'll handle it, it's fine. So even though, yeah, it was a bit extra, I think that it actually fits this family because they are just simple. You know what, you're right, because don't worry, I trust Tony. Bruv, you're older yeah. than him, like, come I on, know. bro. You're Max. the one who's supposed to put your foot down. Yeah. Hey, do you want to watch some pen time? Like, come on, guys. But you know what? Okay, so I guess on to the verdict. So last time we did this, Big Boy Simon said it was a hot with four out of five categories, and I said it was hot with three out of five categories. There were certain things that we didn't like, but... For me, on this one, it is absolutely hot. It was not a waste of my time. I really, really enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to it, season two. Well, just like Ruka, I really, really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it from the beginning, so I'm kind of a little bit better than Ruka in this situation. But yeah, <laughs> so it's definitely a hot in the beginning and it's definitely a hot now. And I'm definitely thinking that season two is gonna be a hot too. I'm definitely ready for the next season as well. And just before we close it out, I just want to say the opening is like so underrated because it's just sick. I don't care. The song choice was good. Yes. I, I didn't really care very much. Whatever. <laughs> so don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Peace.